Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? I'm back. Um, my name is Raf. I'm the CEO, entrepreneur, business owner for Raf's Coaching LLC. Uh, welcome to the entrepreneur parking lot. Uh, where all entrepreneurs, we have existing entrepreneurs, upcoming entrepreneurs, and uh, those that are interested in starting a business to become an entrepreneur or business owner slash CEO. Um, welcome everybody, happy Friday. Uh, today's a great day, we have a special guest, her name is Jessica, all the way from the other side of the world, um, Australia that is. Um, I was here on here earlier and we mixed up the world clocks a little bit. Um, so I apologize uh, to her and I also apologize uh, to you guys watching as well because uh, hair off, we are, I think the clock has us off by 40 minutes or so, uh, maybe an hour. Um, I set it up right. It was Eastern time. I hit the thing. I sent the link, you know, checked it. Um, but a little bit of gap. So that's what happens when. You got technology, different time zones across the world. So um, super excited to bring her on and talk with her about her journey as entrepreneurship, her coaching programs. I won't give out too much more. I already said uh, way too much. Um, what's up, David? How are you, Christopher? Fei Fei, what's going on? Uh, happy Friday. Um, weekend is here. November is here. Um, so shout out to uh, November. 2022, uh, closing up the year strong. I hope everyone's having a great time, uh, doing great things and accomplishing some great goals. So uh, we're here. Um, if you're new to the group, welcome. Um, if you don't know what we do here, we are entrepreneurs and we bless everybody that are entrepreneurs on this platform within each other or within the platform, uh, right? So if you have a gem or you have a business, uh, something you wanna share on a business level, um, or on personal level, as far as like financial uh, literacy, profiles, um, anything to help your credit, anything with business credit, anything about grants, any business news that you have. Uh, realtors are welcome, consultants are welcome, that's me. Um, salespeople are very welcome. Um, a lot of great people in business on this platform, um, a lot of great partners. I've had a chance with this platform alone uh, I have been able to connect with many, many different uh, entrepreneurs, a lot of great business people, uh, seeing familiar names pop up in the live. So Joseph, Rudy, uh, what's up guys? How are you? Uh, good evening. Um, sorry, our guest just sent me a message. Let me just respond back. Let me see if I can invite. Let me see if I can invite. No, I can't invite. Guess for how loud is the request? I should be joining on video. Let me see. Bye. Hang tight. I'll be right back. All right. Sorry about that. I was uh, I was actually messaging our guests. Um, it should it should be joining us soon. <laughs> Here we go. Approves. All right. We're off to the races. Um, thanks for you guys joining. Hanging. Appreciate it. <laughs> hey, hey. Hi. <laughs> What's going on? How are you? Good evening. Good morning, I mean. Good morning. Yeah, good afternoon for you. Good morning from Oz. How are you doing today? Incredible. Thank you. Incredible. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Great to meet you. Great to see you. I apologize about the world clock. I swear I checked it like three times and I looked at it. Um, but hey, that's technology, that's uh, time zones and things of that sort. So I, uh, I apologize on my behalf to you and to the people coming on, but it's a good thing that we could just save it and revisit always. So that's cool. Yeah. Um, one of the reasons it probably happened is because the state I live in in Australia is the only state that doesn't do daylight savings. So the that's, rest of the- That's exactly probably what it is. <laughs> yeah, because we were off by like, like 40 minutes and almost an hour. So that that's it right there, the savings. And I think our our clocks go back, I think this weekend or today. I don't I don't really know. <laughs> the phone does it for me. So I'm like, whatever. Um, well, yeah. <laughs> when I was a kid, um, 
we would used to have to set the clocks back and like my father would go around the house and set the clocks and that was it. There was no cell phones to do it automatically. Um, but now with the phone just doing it automatically, I'm like, an um, employee yeah. tells me he's late to work. I'm like, no, that don't work no more. <laughs> um, so I just gave him your first name. So feel free to tell the audience, um, tell them about you, uh, whatever you would like, introduce yourself. Um, I just told him we have Jessica joining us today. Uh, she's a great entrepreneur. She's got great programs and that's all I gave him. So the floor yeah. is yours. Gosh, well, I have quite a unique story, but yeah, I'm Jessica Kate from Australia. I'm the founder of Inspiring Minds Academy, which is a, a global academy. We help people all over the world, uh, aspiring entrepreneurs, season game changers, whatever area you're in, in your entrepreneurial journey, whatever stage, our, our, our promise is to help you become a magnet for success and reach that next level. And that's because I personally, in my own journey, I uh, was a struggling entrepreneur for years. I, you know, was stuck in that nine to five job. I had multiple side hustles. I nice. hunger and this fire inside of me that was just, I knew there was something more out there. And I was conditioned by my environment and my peers growing up. You know, I had a rough upbringing. I'm the only member of my family that's not a drug addict. I left home at 17. Wow. The first place I moved into was my friend's car garage. My bed was literally set up next to the washing machine. Wow. And <laughs> Fun. I tell everyone that was my head start in life because starting with nothing helped me find ways to create and want everything. And in a, in a, in a sense that wasn't keeping me trapped in survival mode, you know, for so long that struggling entrepreneur was in survival mode. I was in hustle mode. I was in that grind and that, and that hustle and that, in that survival mode of I need, and I was trying to create from a state of lack. Right, and right. What all my teachings are about is creating that shift within us and our energy and our mindset and changing our personality to change our reality. Right. Mm -hmm. And so many of us um, are governed by evidence. We need evidence in order to believe in something. And that's just the human conditioning. That's just what society, your peers, everyone will tell you is that you need evidence to believe in something. And this is what I love about this beautiful thing called the internet. The fact that you and I are now connecting from the other side of the world. <laughs> so, <laughs> internet yeah. high fives, I call them. You know what I mean? That's crazy, but, you know? <laughs> and in, in that, you know, I practice gratitude every day. And that's one of the things that's high on my list is, is I'm so grateful for this beautiful thing we take for granted every day called the internet. And I remember growing up and one of my first side hustles, I had to do letterbox drops and I had to advertise in the paper in order to try and get clients and get leads because we didn't have this access to this beautiful thing called right. the So you were down to the old school book, <laughs> phone, you know, door service. Yeah, so the whole hustle and grind. Yeah, absolutely. I knew what it took to, you know, door knock and, you know, you know, talk to people in, in person and, and, and cold hard sell and all those things. I was put through the grinder basically. So... <laughs> around the block a few times i just turned 40 this year so that was a massive milestone congratulations for me. yeah <laughs> and i don't feel it though <laughs> i don't no, feel it no way yeah the energy that i generate every day i certainly don't feel it um, yeah i yeah. had a chance to look a little bit um a little bit of your um like i went on your your feed and i saw health i saw you know uh, fitness. I saw all those great things. Um, you know, did you start doing that early? Have you developed that? Um, you know, do you, can you take us a little bit through your routine a little bit, not to jump off side, but yeah. no, absolutely. Ask away, whatever you feel you, you want to ask, or you feel that your audience will get value from. I'm more than happy to share. I'm a very transparent person. Awesome. Um, yeah. So I think, um, what I was saying before and how that's relatable to your question is that when I was 14, I got a job in the local cafe in, in, our, in our small town. I grew up in a small country town. And the most popular cafe was like where all the tourist bus and that would come through and this, and this cafe would, would get really busy. It was um, the hot spot in our town. And I got a job there when I was 14 and I got paid $4 cash an hour. <laughs> <laughs> tables, clearing tables, cooking hot chips and um, making tea and coffee and those sorts of things, right? And... What it did was it got me out of my toxic environment at home. That's why it was worth the $4 an hour for me. And it put me in proximity of business owners and learning customer service and learning more about people from other walks of life. And I think that's the biggest 
was the biggest catalyst moment or biggest um, change for me that, that changed the trajectory of my journey mm -hmm. and showed me, you know, when we're looking for that success, you know, we're always hunting for um, evidence of how, how, how can I believe this is possible? And this mm -hmm. is what I always this to people. Like, remember when we were little, we used to believe in like monsters under the bed and we believed. <laughs> and the we good believed times, in... the good times. <laughs> yeah, right? We believed in Santa Claus. We believed in the tooth fairy. We had these wild imaginations where we had this ability to believe in things without evidence. And then life circumstances happen and we get told Santa Claus isn't real, the tooth fairy's not real, and monsters aren't real. And we reach an age where society and our peers and everyone will start to tell us that you shouldn't believe in things without evidence. And then when bad things happen to us, we stack up those events and those occurrences and we, we stack it up and build it as evidence, right? As this huge testimony against, to, to argue our limitations, to, to you know, um, basically have these limitations be verified and, and validate them. And that's where when I moved from my current environment and, and started working in this cafe, I was meeting all different walks of life and meeting different people from different countries, different accents. Um, it really opened my eyes to know that there's a whole other world out there as opposed to what I was being subjected to. And I also was somebody of business owners, watching how they ran their business, how they ran this cafe and watching um, the responsibilities and the action that was, that was required in order to get ahead. So that was a big change for me. And then as I got older, um, I realized that it was how we choose to react to things and how we choose to take action. And, mm -hmm. you know, many people ask me, how come you didn't end up like the rest of your family? Because I have an older sibling and she ended up the same as my, my, you know, my family. She followed suit. And I, and it's funny, you know, everyone's probably heard that story about the two sons that came from a, a father of, of alcoholism. And they say, you know, one built a great, a crazy, um, like an amazing success, and the other one ended up an alcoholic. And right. they get up. Reminds me of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, you know, yeah. like reminds me of that story, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And they get asked that question, like, what, 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 how did you turn out this way? You know, what's the reason? And they both have the same answer and say, well, look what I came from. How do you expect me to be any different? Right. And one's blaming the environment they grew up in to become that way. And the other one was saying, well, I don't want to be that. And that happened to be me. And so it took a while to digest and accept that I was a black sheep of the family and I'm okay with that. <laughs> and right, I actually right. realized I had a superpower and I started to tap into that more. And so instead of dealing with the environment that I was in, I'd find ways to escape it. And that was you know going for walks or runs or exploring or whatever i needed to do there you go. There you yeah go. i implemented a routine so as i got older and i was able to leave home at, at you know quite a young age as soon as i finished school i was out and i had this you know this um realization of like this is my world this is my reality i get to create it and i want to surround myself with people that are showing me evidence that there's something more out there and um, create a routine that that allows me to take action toward that every single day relentlessly yeah so the love routine it. love it yeah I, I love my routine I'm addicted to my routine like yeah it just if I don't do my routine I, I feel like there's something missing of the day you know um, it sets me up from like my affirmations in the morning to mm -hmm. my workouts to like even the food I put in my body you know yeah. like you know, those are the things that like really make the day, um, you know, and I feel like if I miss out on my affirmations in the morning, I feel like I'm really cheated myself for the morning time or for the day. Because, you know, I'm like, Raph, how did you not say things that you're grateful for today? Like, how did you miss that? You know, so um, I'm super with you use the word evidence a lot. And I love it because it's such a powerful <laughs> word. Uh, word. Why don't you tell, can you tell us a little bit why do you use the word evidence? in your in your um, coaching or in your in your examples what 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 does the word evidence mean to you um and how can you like explain it to others of you know relating it to that that piece of your coaching yeah well again i think we're conditioned to believe a certain way or have certain beliefs because of society and and what people project onto us other people's limitations and what other people think and they shut us down with our dreams and our 
and our beliefs, right? And so personally, I came from an era or a generation where working hard was the norm. You wanted results, you had to hustle hard, you had to work hard. You know, my father was a laborer. Every other father out there I knew was a hardworking laborer. And you, I was conditioned and shown that you had to work hard, physically mm -hmm. work hard in order to get results in life. No one ever talked about um, the 3D reality and the quantum field and abundance and manifestation and all this. Right. I didn't hear and, that either a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and I went to church, <laughs> you know? <laughs> uh, my parents were atheists, so. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I figure. But um, as I got older, I started to tap more into that energy and realized that, uh, so I learned that my human design, I'm a manifesting generator. And so I dive deeper into that in recent years as well. But prior to that, when I didn't know, there was something intuitive about, I almost called, I think back then they called it like ESP or something. And it was when I would intuitively have this gut instinct, like something's going to happen or something's not going to happen. Uh -huh. Whatever it was, I can't explain it but I always had something sort of intuitive that in, in a voice or an inner guidance that sort of told me. And then as I got older, it all started to make more sense as I did research and I try not to talk about it too much on my social media to freak people out because people um, think it's very woo woo. But when I learned the difference and um, tapped into the energy of like a 3d reality and then the quantum field, there's a gap there. There's a bridge um, that needs to be, you know, you need to bridge that gap. And Basically, people are trapped in the 3D reality where they need evidence. That's what I was talking about. They need ah, evidence. Gotcha, yeah, gotcha. that's your reality. That and what happens is when people are in a state of lack and they are without, they are relying on their 3D reality to provide evidence to them in order to believe in something. And even if they see someone on social media achieving success or something that they want for themselves, they will still tell themselves or that would never happen for me, or that's not possible for me, mm -hmm. right? They don't choose to believe anymore, just like they did when they were little and chose to believe in Santa Claus and all the rest of it. So I found that um, getting people to understand the difference between expecting evidence or looking for evidence in their 3D reality, they can start to uh, draw in on that energy from the quantum field, which is, they can't, they can't touch that, right? It's, it's, it, it, there's no evidence. But if you choose to believe and you condition your mind and your body to sit in the energy of that's already happened for me, um, I've already been able to uh, achieve that or receive that or um, you're able to sit in the fields and that energy of I have what it is I already want and I'm not in a state of lack. Right. When do that you are bridging that gap you're removing the distance between your 3d reality and the quantum field yeah and then you're also creating you're creating confidence like within yourself and it's like you're feeding your mind and your body and your inner self to like think differently about yourself you know like instilling that in your body and your soul that's like super important like people have to do that you know Absolutely. if you say like i'm i'm going to do this today and you say it over like it's so you if you need to pick up milk from the store and you're like well i need to get milk from the store right if you say it once and you don't set a reminder you may forget to get milk you know you may get home and you're like oh snap but if you say i need milk from the store five times over and the next 30 minutes you're gonna remember that you have to get milk because you've said it to yourself don't forget milk don't forget milk you know so it's the same thing it's the same exact thing that's why your affirmations that you do in the morning yeah, is can, yeah. Yeah, it's programming, it's rewiring your mind. Yeah. So basically it's that, that jump from not expecting to only rely on evidence in your 3d reality, even in your 3d reality, you can find people that have already achieved what it is that you're looking for. You might find a coach that's hitting the figures per month, or whatever that you want. You might see someone driving your dream car or living your dream life. So there is evidence there, but people will still find ways to put up limitations and say that that's not possible for me. And so that's my job in allowing people to break that conditioning, change that wire, change their belief system in order to create the success. So I believe my point of difference in my line of work is I'm no ordinary life or business coach or, you know, a lot of business coaches would jump on social media and say, I'm going to make you six, seven figures and come join my program and sell, sell, sell and all this. Mm. All 
is simply show up authentically in the energy that I sit in every single day. And that is the, the magnetic, beautiful attraction and abundance that I have in my life. And that's purely over a course of me learning and growing and evolving and reaching that next level every single time. Because I don't compare myself to those that have achieved success and say, well, we're at this level. I don't ever compare like finish lines. I compare like start lines. And my mm -hmm. start line is really far back, right? As opposed to someone who grew up in a home that was much more comfortable <laughs> than what right, I did. Right. Who had better role models, who wasn't conditioned with the beliefs and the environment that I had. Um, but I see all that as, as a huge benefit to me now. But back then, I thought it was a huge hindrance to me. And that's the difference in, um, uh, I guess, I just like inspiring people to, to show them that it doesn't matter where you come from. You get to choose your reality. You get to build and develop your own reality and your life of what you want. And that's what I'm helping people do all over the world. That's awesome. That's really awesome. Yeah, I think um, in entrepreneurship, in business, like you're driving, you make all the rules, you are in control of your destination. And you can put whatever you want out there, you know, but again, you're gonna have to um, present to the world who you are, what you believe in, um, what you're passionate about, why you're passionate about it. Um, so that they can attract and vice versa. You know, I think I always feel like every client or every um, person that you speak to is like a relationship of some sort. You know, you guys have to have that relationship. Someone's got to listen. Someone's got to talk, but it's got to be vice versa. You know, even though I'm the coach, doesn't mean that I can't get coached. <laughs> you know, like it doesn't mean that I can't learn something from you. Um, like tonight, I've already learned three things from you and you speaking, you know, so that's the that's the power of empowerment. That's the power of relationships. That's the power of communication, you know, so God bless to that. Um, <laughs> can you take us a little bit through your like your transition with entrepreneur? I know you had side hustles. You were doing the nine to five. When did it change? How did it change? And then your transition? Yeah. It's, it's actually a really cool story. So, um, as I said, I always knew I had that entrepreneurial blood and sort of that fire inside of me and I was always looking for something more. But as I said, like society will condition you and, and tell you to get a safe, secure job. And I guess since I left home at a young age, there was this sense of stability and security that I really needed to try and provide for myself as well, which put me in that survival mode. And I... I listened to the external noise and was like, I oh, know I should stay in my job in the law firm. And, you know, and a lot of people thought, Oh, that's so respectful as well. You know, people that knew my background or um, learnt of my background, they were like, well, how did you turn out like this? You know, they were so stunned that here I was working in a law firm and I sort of painted this image and this picture to everyone else that, Hey, look what I, I turned out to be a success. But this is the flip side of it. And what I love about this is that, when one of the law firms I was working in, um, it was the last law firm I worked in. This was the callous moment for me. I had um, the, the, the lawyer I worked under was the, the general manager. He was the owner of the firm. And he was this giant man. And I don't mean like obesely overweight. I just mean like he was a giant man. He was very tall, very, wow. like a, yeah, a big brute man and he had a deep voice as well and he was quite intimidating kind of like oh, a that is intimidating. <laughs> yeah kind of like Robbins, right um but not so much in a positive way he was quite chauvinistic he was raised in that era in that generation where women belong in the kitchen do as they're told that kind of thing and it was a very male dominant environment and he would yell things to me like um run girly, hurry up, go fetch me this, that kind of thing. You know, that was acceptable back then, Raph. Yeah, it was crazy. yeah. It's yeah. crazy to hear that now, you know, I, like crazy, <laughs> crazy to hear now. No, but back then um, it was quite acceptable. And I was uh, sort of early, early 20s at this point. Um, it was like 23, 23, somewhere where I'm there. And he had a favorite in the office. There was like what we would call the, the, the teacher's pet, right? She was mm -hmm. like, the, he was. He was we, they're, they're still in the offices. They're still around. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's got one. Yeah. Yeah. So I can't remember her name for the life of me. Um, I think it was Katie, but anyway, we'll just call her Katie. So 
uh, Katie was the, was the, the boss's pet. And, um, I remember one day, uh, cause it was frowned upon to leave work on time. Everyone expected in the corporate world that you would put in overtime. And she ended up, tw there was two um, nights a week that she would leave bang on the dot at five o'clock. And so a few people got curious, like, you know, how come he's not saying anything and what's happening here? And one afternoon he said, if everyone's wondering why Katie's leaving early, um, or not so much early on time, she should have been leaving then. Um, <laughs> yeah. He said, she has another job to go to. She bought a brand new car and she works two nights a week at the supermarket stocking the shelves uh, to pay off a new car. And he said, I think we could all learn something from this work ethic. We need more people like this in the world. This is called hard work, blah, blah, blah. And he lectured us all. <laughs> and so I went home that night feeling like a parent had just told me that my sibling was better than me, if you know mm. that you know and that's how I saw it it was like my authority figure was telling me she's doing a great job and you are you're failing at life you suck <laughs> and so I was like you know I'd already been thinking about what I could do on the side and I actually started selling Mary Kay at, um prior to this as well I know that's big in America but it did, yeah it, it was huge I mean everybody sells it I mean people still sell a little bit of it like but right. it was huge in the 90s yeah. Back then when it was really big, it was pretty big in Australia as well. And I started doing that. And that's what I mean by I learned to door knock and all kinds of things. Uh, wow. Bags and, yeah, I was <laughs> Mary Kay. And so I already knew that I wanted to do something else, but I just didn't know how I was going to get out of this office situation. And it was, you know, it was the, the crust, like it paid for my lifestyle. And, and how was I going to survive without it? So I went home that night after this conversation and, and, you know, him telling us that we're all failing and we need to be better. And I tossed and turned on my pillow that night. And I couldn't sleep. I couldn't get this whole story that he was sharing with us about Katie out of my head. And I thought something just doesn't add up. If you work two jobs, you get taxed double, right? Yep. So that was a reason I didn't take up a second job because you lose so much money in that. So once you calculate what you get per hour, it didn't make any sense to me. Yeah, and you're very uh, beating down your body. Destroying yeah. your body, you're not getting sleep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, on top of that, um, this second job that she took up wasn't alluding to a, a future in that field. Like, she doesn't want to be a professional grocery store. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. No way. Like, that's not advancing yourself. That's just taking on a job that's uh, a stepping stone. You know what I mean? Like, right. it's not. I don't know. It's a time filler. It's not really advancing yourself in any way. You wouldn't even really grow in that role. I wouldn't think, right. but anyway, so that didn't make sense to me either. And I also thought I, I was always told not to buy brand new cars. Cause as soon as you drive them off the lot, you, you know, they depreciate in an immense amount of value when you could even buy just, um, one of the cars that they use for, for test driving used cars. Yeah. And that's another gem for people. If you don't know, like a used car is the biggest gem in the world. Like it was a big thing back then. But it's still like a really thing. Like people, like as soon as you drive off that lot with a brand new car, you lost like seven, ten thousand dollars off that car. Yeah, right I mean, that. yeah, yeah. So uh, I I looked at all of these things that I had learned in my journey, or that I sort of questioned, and then I was like, you know what? I'm going to do better than what Katie's doing. I'm going to come up with something better. And then that was when I launched a side hustle, which turned into two side hustles. And I enrolled in a night school and studied beauty therapy and learned how to do um, acrylic nails and nail art and all of these things. And Very from that, um, I started doing nails for girls that worked in promotional work, um, like private parties, bikini waitressing, um, girls that dress up for uh, in Vegas showgirl costumes for poker oh, wow. games. Um, That's a tough client list right there. Yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah, and so that client list grew because all the girls were like, oh, where'd you get your nails done? And so I'm, I had a point of difference. I did some really wild nail art. It was really creative. Luckily, that's in that's in my DNA. I'm very creative. Um, and so it helped. And then I made so many contacts in this industry. I thought, wait a minute. I can start another side hustle here. All these girls loved and trusted me so much. I built so much rapport with, with them. And then I launched my uh, another side hustle called Pink Diamond Promotions. And so I started recruiting these women and um, having people, have, having all these gentlemen contact me and I was promoting that I had the girls. And because I was doing their nails and I was, you know, manicuring them and making sure, 
I only picked top quality girls. I picked really attractive girls. Ah, I like it. Where a lot of the other companies, they were just, you know, trying to, they were focusing on the masses and getting like girls. Anybody. Yeah, they want the number, not quality, yeah. you know? Yeah. So I went that premium service, premium quality, higher rates, and, you know, word spread and it grew. And That's that was nice. just quite wow. And so I had these two side hustles. Majority of it was cash. So probably shouldn't be admitting that online, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. No tax, all clean, you know, like, hey. That's great, though. Smart business. Smart business. Right. Um, I was doing all of that, and then one of those side hustles turned into a full-time gig. So I ended up dropping the promotional work because I had to constantly rely on external sources to show up for work. And these girls were, you know, not the most conscious with work ethic and right, right. Um, a bit unreliable and too into themselves and that kind of thing. You know, it's the caliber of people you're dealing with. And so I, I just decided to drop that. And then I focused more on the beauty business. So I hired more girls. I trained them. I opened salons and that, yeah, I grew that to six figures pretty quickly, left the corporate world and then dove into that. And then I started you know, launching a clothing line because fashion and beauty go hand in hand. I already had a huge clientele and a following. We used to have all the celebrity guests and all the influencers come to the salon. Um, you know, we were the biggest in our, in our city and uh, really popular and it was yeah it was really taking off so i started thinking again entrepreneurial mindset how can i expand this again and go a different way and i wanted to have something that i could make money in my sleep and not be governed by having to be in the store having to monitor the staff and manage all of that i wanted to think outside the box and be like what can i do to make money in my sleep so that's how i started uh, the clothing line but then I had so much going on in my personal life. That was when I lost my father to suicide. So sorry. thank you. My father passed away and I put the clothing thing to the side. I actually shut down my salon temporarily and had some time off to grieve. And in that point, people were like, oh, but you can't do that. And I was like, no, it's my effing life. I can do what I want. <laughs> and, uh, right. and, that's, and that's when I decided to go to Tony Robbins events and do all the personal development and work through my grief the best way I knew how. Um, and that was a huge catalyst for me in my life. I got home from those Tony Robbins events. Um, I left my marriage and my partner of 10 years and I just went and created a whole new life for myself and went in a different direction. It was a rebirth. It was, was a rebirth. Awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Great, 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 <laughs> great story. Um, it's funny that you mentioned the Tony Robinson thing too, because like we connected because we liked a similar post um, or a similar, similar video from Tony. Um, huh? And I, I think I've told the audience this before, but that's what I do for like some of my audiences, right? Like a lot of my older audience and my friends and things of that sort, they were like, I love them to death. Some of them still out there, you know, but the other ones just wasn't in line what my vision was, what I wanted to accomplish, some of my goals, like, you know, these, I don't drink or smoke. Yeah. And I used to, I used yeah. to, but I don't yeah. anymore. And that's okay for those that do. I'm not mm -hmm. saying that's, you know, to, if you do it, you enjoy it, that's you. But mm -hmm. I stopped doing it, right? So um, I had to create a different audience so I could kind of feel, feel that energy off of. Because even though you're scrolling through Facebook, you're on your phone, what you look at, what you entertain, what you comment on, that comes part of your you, part of you. And if you do it enough, like you, you follow suit, right? Um, mm -hmm. If you see it enough, you want to like follow suit and follow that pattern. So, I actually, uh, I think it was one of his videos. I clicked on the likes and comments, and I added about like I, I think you commented on something, one of his videos. So okay. I added all the people that commented. It was like ten comments on it, and that's how we became a connection. And then I think we messaged you like, how, you know, how do you know me? <laughs> Where did we connect? And I was like, I think we connected through Tony because I saw one of your posts and it had Tony. And I was like, oh, we connected through Tony because I love Tony. You love Tony. Um, and then look, now we, you know, now we're talking on live and talking about entrepreneurship and then we have a common interest. Um, the reason I say all that, right, is because you have to find your audience with the common interest. Like if you're in, if you're, they were part of an entrepreneur parking lot, CEOs, business, whatever title it is, we're in business, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we enjoy it. We enjoy helping people. We coach yeah. the people. You know, we love that. 
Um, yes. So that's why it makes it easier to connect. But for those that are watching and you're in business and you're starting a business or you're, you're kind of stuck in business and you're like, well, why can't I connect to people? You got to look on the inside and look on the outside of what your audience looks like. And not even so much audience, but who's around you, you know, who you talk to, who you wake up to, who your neighbors are, um, who you communicate with. If you're working, even your work environment, like look around you there. Like, is there, is that influencing you? Is it stressing you out? Is it bringing you down? Um, but you got to connect to the right people. Like if you want to get a message or a vision across, or even if you want to grow yourself, got to connect with the right people. So, you know, I tell people all the time, look at your friends list, look at your audience and like audit that. Like you have the tools. If you're on professional mode, you have the tools to see it. If you have like insights, you have the tools to see it. Um, do test posts, like, and see who likes it, see who doesn't, you know? So um, you have all those tools at, tools at your resources. You have to use it and you got to build your audience to match your content. Your content has to match your audience. If you, uh, if you got a, a, a whole bunch of Dallas Cowboy fans and you're talking about the Eagles, you probably will have high audience uh, insights because they're just going to trash you. But they're never going to agree or sync with you because you're mixing the Dallas Cowboys with the Philadelphia Eagles. You know, they don't see each other the same, you know. So, um, but speaking of content and audience, um, can you, you posted something um, and I think you have the highlight is that um, you're, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, you're able to, um, you know, talk about content um, or, you know, uh, generate revenue or sales without an offer. Um, and, and before you get into it, people ask me all the time, you know, like, why don't you put prices on your master class? Why don't you put prices on your, uh, your ads or your posts? And I'm like, I'm not here for the price. I'm not here for the price. Yes, there is a price in the background of it, but it's not displayed because it's like what we do is genuine and there's another way to do it. There's a there's a whole process to it. So that's why you don't see a price to it. But can you take us through a little bit of that? Like what does it mean to sell through your content and yeah. um, without putting a price or a number behind it? Yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll give away as much as I can without giving too much away because our program, our content calibration keys is starting on Tuesday the 8th here in Australia, which would be uh, Monday the 7th for you guys in the afternoon. And I do get people from all over the world that sign up to these programs. And I run different programs on different topics that's um, necessary for the entrepreneurial journey. And especially if you are leveraging off social media in order to uh, you know generate more leads and get sales. So... I want to start with saying that people aren't stupid. And I think with social media, um, the world is desensitized in a sense of, you know, instant gratification. Yeah. So instant gratification, desensitized. People are not stupid, but they are desensitized. And so they are already aware of a sales pitch when they start reading one or they see one. Right, <laughs> right away. <laughs> They can smell it, they can sense it, they can <laughs> right. it, yeah, right? right? And so we've already just discussed this and I'm very big on this about energy, okay? So um, two things. First of all, you can transmit energy just as we are right now through this live and you can do that through your content. You have the potential to do that. And so many people used to rely on live events, physical events, or like people in an audience standing on a stage because the energy that they create in the room, just like Tony Robbins does, right? But even he has proved throughout the pandemic that you can transmit that energy through a live audience on social media. I know it's not quite the same because you're not in that electric room of what Tony creates and it's, it's, it's something else. It's indescribable. However, we have the ability to transmit energy through our content. And it's not only through lives, it's through the language we use, mm -hmm. um, people that we're speaking to. And you must understand the psychology of the people that you're speaking to. And this is what I teach is going really deep on your avatar, your niche, and understand the psychology of your dream buyers. And what I do and what leads to my high ticket sales is I'm not only understanding the psychology of them and how to speak to them, but I get real with them because so many people on social media that try and leverage off it, they're, they're aiming for width. 
They're aiming for how many platforms can I be seen on, how many likes can I get, how many views, all of that. They're focusing so right. much. I focus on depth, right? And the depth is people want it to experience something. That's why they're on social media. That instant gratification is I want to see a funny video. I want to be entertained. They're looking for stimulation. And mm -hmm. so you watch a movie. When you watch a movie, why are you watching it? Because you get lost in that story and everything in your 3D reality doesn't exist at that time, does it? Yeah, it's almost like you visit the quantum field. You're just like, you're, you're in this trance of you're, you're lost in this story. Unless mm -hmm. you have attention span and you got your phone out halfway through the movie and you're just, you know, not in it or you're like hungry, <laughs> right? Right. Yeah, but I only watch... Start living your life like it a little bit, right? <laughs> Everyone's been stuck in that binge show that's like, oh, I'm going to... I want to be a little bit part of this. You know what I mean? Yes. So, I mean, I only watch engaging content. I don't waste my time with drama, movies and things like that that don't um, help program my mind. You were talking about this before with what you consume from the external 3D reality. And I'm very mindful of I don't watch the news. I don't have negative conversations. I don't gossip. I don't bitch and complain. I, I'm very careful about the energy that I project and what I consume because it mirrors back, right? For sure. Um, yeah, getting back on topic, if we are focusing on the psychology of the dream buyer and understanding that they're looking for an experience, just like in a movie, and if that's the case, then people want depth. They want you to hook them with great content that draws them in, and that's what I teach people how to do. If they're using social media, there's a point of difference. There's a way to captivate your dream buyer if you understand them. There's a way to draw them in and share something so deep and profound with them that they automatically want to inbox you or do the call to action or whatever it is that you're asking them to do without actually having to say, by the way, I have a program, sign this line. You know, people are so caught up in this um, experience that you're sharing they just want to feel connected to that experience. They don't want to feel like another number being sold to. Yeah. And that's the secret. And so I, I teach people how to do that. We're all narrators. We all have a story and you and your story is your brand and is the creation behind your content. And that's the other thing. A lot of people haven't owned their story. A lot of people right. are too niche to a lot of people don't understand their avatar. Um, I've had people that have been in businesses for 30 years and they're still stuck in their old ways. And yeah. I have yeah, or you don't know their story. You don't know their mission, their vision. It's like, who are you? <laughs> like, why should, like, why do I trust you, right? Why do I trust you? So, yeah, that's very, very important. I'm glad you said that, uh, the story, and definitely for sharing that. Um, super, super important, like, to be able to, getting that trust factor from your clients or people, because if you don't like, they're, they're not going to, they're not going to gravitate to you. They're not going to sign up. <laughs> they're not going to, people work really. And like you said it too, like earlier in, in, you know, how hard people work, right? We talked about Katie and Katie was working two jobs and she's working really hard to maintain a life or, you know, pay off her new car or, you know, stability. So that's her hard earned work, you know, her hard earned money. Mm -hmm. So when people want to give that up, they want to make sure that the return on investment is there. You know, they don't want to feel like they wasted yeah. their money. Like that feeling of where you threw away money or you didn't get anything out of a program, you know, you're never going to get that client back. You're never going to have a, a built relationship from that person. So that trust is important because you're, you're collecting trust in a, you know, money and currency, whatever. That's one thing, but really you're exchanging trust, you know, when that yeah. deposit hits or that, you know, uh, money, um, yeah. when I had my flyers done, you know, and I don't, I normally do all my own work. I do all my own work. Um, this was the first time I was like, I want to invest in someone else's vision. They did phenomenal work. And I trusted this person based off of their work and who they were as a person to do my flyers. But like, it wasn't a huge amount, but that small amount, I was like, I'm trusting you with this. You know what I mean? Like, this is like part of this is like, I got kids at home, I got diapers and stuff. So like, that was like a lot to me, you know? So, um, but to that point, I had to have that trust. Like the trust had to be there first. Yes. For sure. 
love that you're talking about trust because I was just having a conversation with one of my clients yesterday about this. I was coaching her on this and I asked her what was her definition of confidence. And she said, being able to show up relentlessly and know I can get back on my feet and all this. And I was like, that's, that's a very, and it, it was a woman. And I said, that's a very masculine survival attitude response. And I said, someone who's in a state of abundance and not in a state of lack and all of those things, their response would be this. And this is what I believe for confidence to be is full ownership and trust in self. Yeah. Not, oh, I'm so empowered. I'm so strong. I can get back on my feet, all that kind of stuff. That, that's the old me, right? Mm -hmm. That was the old me when I was stuck in survival mode. When I, you know, I used to listen to that song Sia uh, by Sia called Unstoppable and Imagine Dragons, whatever it takes, you know. <laughs> I was hardcore in my masculine, just like, I'm such a survivor. I'm a fighter, you know. I'm not one of those people that freezes up. I'm the first person to be like, what's coming next? Let's mm -hmm. go. Right, right. You were on guard. You were on guard. Yeah. And I had to, well, I shouldn't say I had to, but yeah, I feel like that was my default mode from a young age because I left home at such a young age and I grew up in an environment where, you know, walking on eggshells and domestic violence and all those kinds of things. So I was conditioned by my environment to be that way. And so many people are depending on their upbringing. And that's why when entrepreneurs come to me with these problems at the forefront of their business and saying, well, this isn't working and I'm not making money and this, this, this. It's like, I'm not going to sit down and map out a business plan and give you all these tools and strategies. That's like you would have done and you don't know how the hell to shoot. Yeah. You don't have a target and you don't know how to shoot. So I need to focus on developing the shooter first, evolving them, creating the shift in them, unpacking the shit that's holding them back. Right. Now, load of gun. now, right now, right. let's see. How fire. That's the difference. And every business coach out there is preaching a program to give you 10 steps to sell this and to earn seven figures and all this stuff. This is the shit I'm talking about that people are so desensitized with. They're just like, I've heard it a million times. Right. Now. Yeah. It's like a rerun. It's a broken yeah. rerun. It's so broken. Yeah. yeah. People yeah. want real stimulation. They want a real experience. And that's what your content should do. Your content should give them an experience. I'm going to share something else with you that I'm, you know, going to be sharing in my program and I probably shouldn't be saying oh, we this. Get a, we get a little sneak peek. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Anyone that tunes in and watches this, you are lucky. Now, um, I want to give you an example. So what do you think Louis Vuitton sells? This is another, this is another huge point in um, people being able to sell from their content without actually posting right. it off. So, so the first thing that pops in my mind is like the bag. Yeah. And so anyone else watching this at the moment, how many people have we got on here? I can't see. Right now we have 10 viewers. Great. Okay, guys. So drop in the comments. What do you think Louis Vuitton sells? I'm very curious. Um, so most common response is, as you said, Raph, would be handbags. Mm -hmm. Wrong. I'm going to talk you through how what, what would happen if someone walked into a Louis Vuitton store, right? I mean, I have, so I'm going to tell you. When you walk in there, the sales assistant doesn't say to you, oh my gosh, look at this leather. It's so, you know, it's so genuine. It's made in Italy or whatever. And look at our fine stitching and the quality of the bag. And, you know, it's got extra pockets. Did you see? Look at this extra zipper in this pocket here. <laughs> no, 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 no. Louis Vuitton doesn't do that. Louis Vuitton sells, sells wealth. Louis Vuitton sells wealth and power right? They're not selling bags, they're selling wealth and power because it's how you feel when Louis Vuitton's on you. Mm -hmm. yeah? yeah. I can afford, I earned this, whatever, you know, rich, rich girl in a rich family, what, how, you know, maybe she didn't earn it. I don't know. But right. the point is when people wear it, it's a statement to the world that I feel powerful. I feel wealthy. Look at me, right? Mm -hmm. That's what telling, that's the difference. And this is where people go wrong in their content creation is they don't understand what they're actually selling. Okay, I'll, I'll give you another one. What does McDonald's sell? Fry. First thing I think is the fries. The fries. <laughs> <laughs> I would have thought but that would have been the main response. Right, right, right. Yeah, and guys, tell us in the comments, what, what do you think McDonald's sells? Let's see what anyone says. But um, So the answer to that is happiness. That's true. That's true. Right? That's What's true. the name of the main meal? Which, the Happy Meal. I mean, it's the Happy ah. Meal. 
Oh, you're like, you went out for a second. I'm sorry. Ah, uh, what's their mascot? The clown. <laughs> what I know this because I worked at McDonald's for like six years, 14 oh. to like 19, 18, uh, yeah. Right. The whole nine yards, scrubbing floors, crowds, the lobby. My gosh. <laughs> the whole thing, drive through. Everyone. Wow. Yeah. So McDonald's sells happiness, guys. The right. the the mascot's a clown. Um, their their main meal is called a happy meal. Like they sell happiness. They have a play center at every um restaurant. They sell happiness. They're not just selling burgers. They're selling happiness. They're selling an experience. So mm -hmm. just like Louis Vuitton, just like McDonald's, you have to find in your brand what are you actually selling. Right. And that and it's like Starbucks. Think when you think of Starbucks, you go there for perfection. <laughs> like Starbucks, you go there because you know, like it's going to be perfect coffee. It's like damn near perfection. You know what I mean? You know, like you don't need to add more sugar. You don't need to add more cream. Like you go there to get it right. Same thing with Chick-fil-A. It's like, I don't check the bag. I don't need to. It's right. You know what I mean? So yeah. they sell the experience. Yeah. Very good point. Yeah. Very good point. Um, I would say Starbucks, if I'm thinking outside the box, I would say that Starbucks um, is selling connection. That's true. Yeah. 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 There's connection because people are like, well, let's meet at Starbucks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. That is very, very true. And they're doing meetings at Starbucks. They're on their yeah. laptops. They're doing conference yeah. calls. You're not walking in Dunkin' Donuts and getting, <laughs> you're no. not getting a connection. You're not getting yeah. a meeting. So yeah, very yeah. good. So it's like people feel like, oh, if I'm lonely or I want to be around people, hey, I'll just go to my local Starbucks. I'll buy a drink. I'll sit down. There'll be people around me. They know that it's a place to meet. Mm -hmm. It's, yeah, it, it's it's a place where people pick to have their first date or something. Like, let's just grab a casual coffee or whatever. It's They're selling connection, togetherness. Um, they're not just selling coffee. Yeah, and you're right, because they got the little couches in the middle. They got the little, like, the, the chairs that are like all leather and you lean back on it. It's like super comfortable. So yeah, right? yeah, you're right. You're right. You're totally yeah. right. spot on. Yeah. So it's thinking outside the box. And this is what I take people through, um, through the steps in my programs is truly tapping into how to unleash that entrepreneur in you first, how to get you thinking outside that box, how to get into the psychology of your dream buyer, understand what you, your brand, your story, your message, how it, how we can align all of that to produce engaging, compelling content. And then I go an extra step and teach you how to take one piece of compelling content and use it 10 different ways. So Love that it. you don't- I've seen that by the way too. Yeah. I'm like, oh man, this girl, she's great. She's good. Yeah. Um, and, but you, it, you gotta see it and understand it to, yeah. for it to make sense. Because um, if you don't understand it and there isn't strategy behind it, it just looks like a post right but yeah. at the same there's so much more into it and that's a very good point is when you start putting more into your content and when i say putting more into the content it's not like putting more letters or more numbers or more prices that's not what we mean by putting more in your content it's literally putting more in your content and you know take your course you find out what putting more into your content is uh but I love it. Great stuff. Yeah. Very great stuff. So yeah, incredible. So that's all it takes, guys. Is like actual real human, <laughs> human connection, human depth, and and helping people feel human. I love that's, it. I love it. Yeah, yeah don't get lost in this. Social media is a great asset. It's a great tool. Um, but Instagram went down two days ago, and people couldn't post, and they were freaking out. And then I saw a feed about email marketing, you know, not one day, one time in the last six months did I hear about email marketing or having trust and building that content, that, that client list. So that's super important too, as well, because like, we're blessed to have this social media, but what if it goes down and you don't have anything backed up or you didn't make strong connections and people didn't trust you, then you got to build something all over from scratch and you don't even know what's coming next. Right. So mm -hmm. stay ahead of the game, protect your business, protect your craft, um, invest it in and, and so forth. So That's um, it. that was great. Even... I appreciate like the time and everything that you've given to us. Um, do you have anything that we can, uh, that you can put in the comments or how can people reach you? Like what's the best, best contact to get a hold of some, some Jess? 
<laughs> well, this is what I mean by the power of social media is, you know, although I have a website, no one really uses it. I don't, you know, get people coming through the website. It's all this is where I produce the energy and this is where the content is. And so people just message me privately in the, you know, on Messenger. Uh, people just slide into my DMs on, on Instagram, LinkedIn, all these platforms. They're all monitored by myself and my team. And, you know, if, you, if any of my content resonates with you, any messages I've shared, um, if you're looking for something particular in your business, I run all different programs that cater from branding and building and scaling, selling and creating content. And also a lot of personal development and a lot of mindset work because every level of success in your journey requires a new version of you. And I strongly believe that, like I was saying before, you might have a loaded gun. You might have all the tools, all the strategies. You might have a business that is so solid and you've got that loaded gun there. You've got all the ammo, but you as the shooter is what is taking the business off course. You're not hitting the target. You aren't aligned with with all of it and yeah so working on the shooter and the back end of things is is my jam that's my specialty that's that's what i do and yeah it's it's changing your belief system it's shifting your energy it's helping you become a magnet for success and that's my promise with the academy or our promise is uh, to become a magnet for success i don't promise you'll make seven six figures and all of those things because i can't control your actions that's on you and i don't even know what your version of success is right, right. We all have different versions, but yeah. my, my, my promise is to help you break through those glass ceilings, to change your perspective, to uh, push through those limitations and create a new reality for yourself and become the next version of you that's required in order to achieve that next level of success. That's the part I promise. Love it. Love it. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Um, it's been great meeting you. It's been great talking with you today. A lot of gems dropped, a lot about, you know, uh, entrepreneurship, the hustle, the grind, everyone that can relate to. Uh, I love the examples, the real life examples that you shared with us. Um, and then even talking about health and the mind and the body is super important. Um, so if you're replaying this, definitely check it out. Um, appreciate all the entrepreneurs that have joined, all the existing entrepreneurs. Feel free to share, invite anybody to the group that can find beneficial to this. If you need anything from Jess, definitely reach out to her. She'll be in the comments. She'll be loving stuff. You can find her here in the group, uh, but she's here at your access. And thank you so much for your time. Uh, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. I hope, you know, some value was found here today for those that did tune in. Um, for those that are on here live and not watching the playback, this content creation program we've been talking about and all this content, it actually kicks off only in a few days. So if you want to be a part of that, DM me and I can send you some more info. Yes, get her, get <laughs> in the DM. <laughs> yeah. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Have a great night. Uh, well, a great afternoon. Uh, remember, she's in Australia. It's probably nine o'clock in the morning over there. It's yeah. seven here. And uh, thanks so much for making time. I appreciate you making time. Um, and you have a great day. All right. I will. Thank you. All right. I'll see you. Bye-bye.